Boker Tov, Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Hamburg, Germany, the G20 summit is underway. And RT, of course, here already showing some footage of uh, some of the early meetings and those that are taking place in the meeting there. And of course, Hamburg, Germany is also a scene of violence outside of uh, the doors of the meeting there where the world leaders are meeting together. President Donald Trump and President Putin have already met as well as President Putin has met with several other world leaders, including that of Angela Merkel, uh, UK's uh, um, uh, minister as well. All, all of these uh, meetings taking place right now. A lot of protests, though, going on inside of Germany and Hamburg there in the city where this G20 summit meeting is being held. 111 policemen have been injured as a result and it is a very very bad situation they've been using water cannons to try to disperse uh, some of the crowds there pepper spray uh, some some of the actions uh, both by protesters and by police have been pretty 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 brutal on both sides there this video footage here that was taken uh, shared on Twitter, very disturbing images everywhere you drove around this area, cars on fire, uh, including the hotel itself where President Putin and uh, I believe the Japanese uh, prime minister were staying at was also attacked during this particular meeting. This was um, uh, Amichai Stein who shared that particular video footage there. And uh, as we can see here in this Russian article right here, st speaking about how uh, that uh, President Putin's hotel was actually attacked during uh, his stay there. Uh, uh, more troubling as well, though, we find out that President Trump and President Putin, of course, meeting there on the sidelines, talking about a first meeting. But there's already been leaked information. This uh, particular uh, zergulio.livejournal.com article here speaks about how that Rex Tillerson giving some of that inside information ahead of the conference itself that uh, the United States is not going to request that Bashar al-Assad leave power any longer. And instead, it's going to be a trade-off. Russian police will enforce the areas as the Syrian president now controls President Bashar al-Assad, while others control other areas of Syria. The question is, the U.S. is talking about no longer... I guess, pushing to get Assad out of power, but will the United States continue to arm uh, those resistant groups such as the Free Syrian Army? Uh, you have Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and all the other fighting factions that are inside the country. Will they continue to arm them that would still not bring an end to this war? Uh, so we'll have to wait to see how President Putin looks at this particular talks here. And then on this Russian article here as well, this is uh, the uh, president of the European Council, uh, Mr. Uh, Donald Tusk. Uh, he is not very optimistic about the meeting with President Trump and President Putin. Uh, of course, he's speaking about how that President Trump was uh, a very good speech there in Poland. But when he comes to meeting with President Putin here inside of Germany, he feels like that President Trump is far more optimistic about meeting with Putin than most European leaders are. Uh, well, that may be the European Council, but then again, what are they all out to try to do to start a new world order, no doubt. But we do see uh, what seems to be a very cordial conversation there between uh, President Putin and that of Angela Merkel. There are those that were posting this video footage that says that they were actually talking about North Korea uh, and how to handle the situation in North Korea. Whether or not this is actually true or not, can't say for sure. Uh, but nonetheless, they are old friends. They were talking, and uh, of course it does seem like they keep talking about missiles and how far they can fly, at least from the uh, hand gestures, but we can't say for sure. Uh, this was loaded by Alden uh, Abazovic, uh, was the person that actually loaded this on Twitter. Uh, and also, one other bit of news here that just came out that was very troubling to find out in Israel, uh, UNESCO has uh, actually... Uh, considered the very burial grounds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob there to be an endangered Palestinian heritage site, totally ignoring the lineage of the Jewish people. 
if it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are buried there, the very fathers of the Jewish faith to begin with, the patriarchs themselves, and now calling it a Palestinian burial site and calling it an endangered Palestinian heritage site, totally ignoring anything about the Jewish people and their right to their own home country or anything that is associated with them, but rather instead turning these into Muslim holy sites. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling things that are happening right today. Uh, and also one other bit of news here I might share with you as well. Still, there are talks of possible chemical weapons attacks happening inside of Syria. This all taking place while the G20 summit is going on. And no doubt the reason why we are seeing these things happening uh, is because they're trying to uh, ca uh, capitalize on this particular event. Again, this one here says uh, from YouTube Newswire, possible use of chemical weapons reported in air raids in eastern Damascus, Syria. Uh, if there's any chemicals being used, I do not believe it'll be by President Bashar al-Assad nor the Russians, either one, uh, those chemical weapons will definitely be used by those that are on the ground, all these groups that are fighting against them. Only reason I say this is the evidence has been overwhelming to prove otherwise that uh, Assad nor Russia has ever had anything to do with these chemical weapons attacks that are going on. But to the contrary, uh, and we have proven this time and time and time again. Uh, now, as far as bombing, yes, no doubt bombing is still going on. They're trying to keep these militants away from Damascus, the last stronghold of President Bashar al-Assad. Of course, he has get, done major gains around the country and other places as well, uh, and has been doing very successful in the war. But any type of fabricated chemical weapons attack naturally will also embolden uh, President Trump to once again attack. And this is something that these uh, world leaders would love to see happen. Uh, something I've been looking into and I'm going to go into a little bit later though, and that very troubling to me, is uh, President, former President Barack Hussein Obama. I have just really been watching his movements. Uh, seems like, uh, of course, before the G20 summit, he was right ahead of President Trump everywhere President Trump went, especially in Europe, whether it be Rome, Brussels, meeting with Merkel, etc. He was always one step ahead of the game. I cannot say that he has truly been out of power in the United States. And no doubt the deep state is still using him as their figurehead to get the message across to other world leaders. We'll be doing another broadcast on that once we get a chance. Hopefully this weekend I can do a more in-depth study on that. If you got any suggestions, definitely email us at stephenbenoon at gmail.com. Love to hear your thoughts on this as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, stand with us. Support this broadcast that we do. Your help is what keeps us going on the air. You can visit IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there or right above the subscribe button on this channel here. Shalom.